Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays, coming back at you with some more Yoshi's Island. Time for 1 3, the Cave of Chomp Rock. Once again, all these episodes are going to be me kind of fiddling around and trying to figure out what works for me. I don't have any sort of muscle memory or, you know, pre-play. I mean, I've played through these a little bit, but like, you know, realistically speaking, there isn't really a ton that I've done. I haven't gone through and like tried to master any of this stuff in between episodes. And since I have three games going at a time, you know, this... Kirby and then uh, Do Re Mi. Um, it's like a month in between plays, so it can get a little rusty. Anyway, just wanted to go ahead and say uh, thank you for all of you who've been watching and following along these series, whether it be the main series of Pikmin or this. Hopefully you guys are all enjoying yourselves. If you are, please continue to watch the videos, hopefully all the way through if you do. Like the videos, comment if you're feeling risky, and subscribe if you haven't, so that way you can stay up to the date with all kinds of fun d mic plays, d mic industry stuff. So once again, thank you everybody for watching and hopefully you're having a good time. So as we play through and get a little deeper into Yoshi's Island, one of the things that I like about this game in particular is I feel like it has a nice balance of kind of the classic side scroller that you would find in your Mario game, right? Like your Mario world. But it also kind of has a little bit of a, an adventure game element to it where you can kind of explore and take different routes to kind of get to where you're going. Now, in, in all honesty, like the game itself is set up in a way that there's only one real like exit. Obviously, the, you know, the end circle where you get your bonus is always going to be there, but the means with which you do get to that location, there's usually kind of like a split path or like a different way to do it, which I think is kind of a nice touch. So that's fun. And in this specific level, we'll be introduced to items being carried by balloons, which you can jump into dandelion puffs and lose Mario. If you shoot those balloon carrying boxes down, there's usually some sort of a prize in it, whether it be like stars or red coins and whatnot. So shoot those down, practice your egg aiming skills for fun, why not? That was pretty epic, you're welcome for that. Here at DMike Industries we pride ourselves on how epic we can be sometimes, it's situational of course. But yeah, this is kind of, I don't know, just another kind of fun, wacky element of this game that makes it very fun. Also the music of course is always amazing. Shooting stuff down from up above with the eggs kind of makes me f think back to like Animal Crossing. You know, you get the slingshot, and when you get that, you can shoot down the little balloons that are around your village or your island, whatever version you're playing. And you can collect the UZ furniture or something like that. But that balloon had a key. So now that we have the key, we can go the wrong way first. And then we can head into this little locked hut for a mini game. Now, they use the Superstar theme from Super Mario World as the background theme for this balloon minigame. It's a button pusher, kind of like you're playing a game of Simon or something like that. You don't have to remember them. It tells you what to press on the screen. And as much as I love to flex on the average human being with my pro controller strats, it actually is kind of a downfall when using it for this, because when I play, I feel more comfortable with logging the analog stick as my my method of choice for playing. Now you can use the D-pad, I'm sure, but using the Pro Controller in this case, I'm using the analog stick, which has eight direct, or I mean, yeah, I guess technically it's 360 directions if you want to think of it like that. So trying to press it in specific combinations with this is a little tricky. I'm not trying to make an excuse for myself. It kind of sounds like I am, but I mean, full disclosure, I'm not good at this, but the reality is like I did hit I did hit right on my analog stick, but I did not acknowledge it, so that's kinda poopy, but nothing I can do about that. It's okay, you know, you're not gonna win every minigame in the world. Unless you are the undefeated minigame champ, and then I guess technically you would have won every game in the world, but at DMike Industries we pride ourselves on humility and being willing to take ownership for our mistakes. 
one of which was not knocking that crate down in one try. I didn't know that you could actually miss the balloons like that or not get them all. I thought it just kind of like defaulted to you shoot a balloon at the box, you get them all. Apparently not. So that is what it is. Now these little guys with the lanterns are kind of spooky, huh? Makes you think a little bit about like Halloween. It's getting close to that. It's nearing the end of October. So that's fun. And these little kind of bottle caverns, I think are just an opportunity to gain more eggs or a tutorial on how to lose Mario multiple times in five seconds. So color it however you want, but that's how I see it. Not really a great way to gain eggs if you are lacking self-awareness, like I might. So just to keep that in mind. Still pretty fun though. We'll use Blue Yoshi to bonk around and clear up this weird crusty stuff above us that we can just hammer our way through. And it's all about ground pounding. Ground pounding is the name of the game. It's it's plenty of fun, you know? If you don't like ground pounding, then you're not a friend of mine. That's just a fact. I would honestly put that on my resume. You know, skills. What are we good at? What, uh, what, what is um, something we pride ourselves on? What's an accomplishment professionally? And I would say ground pounding like a pro. An epic ground pounder. And if I had McDonald's, please don't sue me McDonald's. If I had McDonald's while ground pounding, I could be a epic ground pounder while eating a quarter pounder. So, why not? Also, uh, piranha plants, dangerous, will eat you, will knock Mario off a of Yoshi. And if you are careful, you can run into them multiple times in a row, just like this. So, did another tutorial, just, you know, just to be careful, don't, uh, don't run into the prana plants. Make sure you have an egg you can shoot them with, because they're nasty. They're nasty. So, just do that. Take care of them that way. So they don't get on your nerves. Get on your noise. They just make me angry. So, yeah, we don't want that. But that's the end of the level. And... We're gonna go ahead and dish on to Yellow Yoshi. But not before we get a bonus challenge. That's right, everybody. Only the most epic of epic. At D-Mike Industries, could you do a bonus challenge? And we got 78 points, not bad. That's a passing grade, right? We're not going to collect all of these. There's going to be roughly 0% uh, 100s in this Let's Play. So hopefully you guys are okay with that and not racking your brains figuring out why I'm incompetent. It's on purpose. It's intentional. It's willful ignorance. So this bonus game, it's a little scratch-off card. Maybe... You know somebody in your family who loves to throw in a lot of money on scratch-offs, for better or for worse? Maybe you get them for Christmas and your stocking or Hanukkah, if you're Jewish? You gotta get little baby Marios instead of the K-Mex. If you get K-Mex, you get nothing, but at least one Mario will get you a life. And that's all that we're gonna get today, so we will have netted a life. We're up to 11 lives, which is pretty good. I don't foresee lives kind of being the issue in this game. It does get pretty tough, though, from what I remember. I kind of just contradicted myself. I said I didn't pre-play, but, you know, I've seen it. I'm not that oblivious, but, you know, it's okay. So, Yellow yellow Yoshi is going to take on Bert the Bashful's Fort. This is pretty fun, and I also really enjoy the music here. So, I'm going to be shutting, me, shutting the old trap for a moment and let you guys enjoy the classic fort theme. Super good. And if we have eggs, we can throw them, but if we don't, we will just look like a ding-dong. But knocking these buckets, all you have to do is hit them on the side and flip them upside down. When you do that, it has them spew their delicious treats all over us. In this case, it's coins. And what's neat is that I think, I believe I could be correct. Incorrect. No, I believe I am incorrect. I'm incorrect a lot. That those little walls that come down from the side, that that's use of mode 7, perhaps. Or the Super FX chip. One of those two things with a Super Nintendo. I want to sound smart when I say that. So I can, you know, not have to call my uncle at Nintendo and ask him. I wouldn't want to bother him because he's so busy on the hotlines trying to help out people with their Super Nintendo games. But... That shot was epic. You are welcome. So we're just going to keep going through Bert's fort here. 
Try not to get squished. That will kill you, I believe. Or if it doesn't kill you, then it knocks Mario off of Yoshi. I wouldn't know because it didn't happen to me because we're doing great. So you can throw eggs at these guys. They kind of make me think of like the Tweedledee, Tweedledum Disney characters. Please don't sue me, Disney. And uh, you can take them out multiple ways. They just kind of hop around and whatnot. Maybe a little foreshadowing, perhaps? The minions of Bur the Bashful. So we're just gonna keep moving along. I just love the the kind of castle fort theme of of this game. It's it's too good. I'm a big fan of it. So you gotta be careful though, you know, watch out for them coming down and gonna squish. I just like the perspective of the way that those look. I think it's just neat. Because it almost feels like it's not going to touch you, and like that it's just going to come straight down, but then it like the perspective changes and the bottom half of the rectangle shifts out and becomes wider. It becomes real thick on the bottom. And that's how we like it at D-Mike Industries. Thick. With two seats. So go ahead and shoot that question cloud. Make yourself a little pathway. And this kind of, this little platform will shift based on the kind of center axis there and where you put your Yoshi. So the further you you run in either direction, it's gonna pop the kind of seesaw the other way, but we didn't even need to get that flower by jumping because we are awesome and we did it with an egg. So, pro strat. Makes me think of New Super Mario Brothers Wii or DS, New Super Mario Bros. Those were really popular with, when you play with a buddy and whichever kind of main character you were using at the time, it would change the platform to kind of be their color or whatnot, and you could work together to get the... Or not work together if you were malicious, which I might have been sometimes, to get the coins and whatnot. So here's a pot. Yoshi loves pot. Pushing that down or shooting with eggs, either or, will net you a key. The key. So now that we have that, we can progress through the fort. This is very good. Making excellent progress. More progress than Progresso Soup. Never actually had that before. I'm more of a Campbell's guy. Please don't sue me, Campbell's. And, uh, yeah. We could go in the boss door right away, but we've got some revenge. We're definitely gonna get some just desserts here. If you remember, we had a little bit of trouble with the Prana Plant, so... We're gonna show them the business. Yeah. Nobody gets away for free. Time for a late night kneecap in the Walmart parking lot. Please listen to me, Walmart. That's another life. I believe that's 12 or 13 now, so we're doing pretty pretty well. Not bad. And I also wanted to get a little revenge here, but this was kind of a waste. I'm actually trying to get more eggs for the upcoming obstacle that we're going to be dealing with. An epic battle. And I'm just doing great. I'm showing you guys exactly how to get Yoshi and Mario separated. This is just how you do it. So here we go. This is our first boss fight of the game with Bashful Burt and Kamek. So Kamek wants us to see his load. And in case we were unsure what that was, he's gonna shoot his goo all over Burt. Yoshi is smart though, he closes his eyes so he doesn't get KMX goo all over his face. That's smart. I mean, it would technically still be all over his face, but at least he can see. Anyway, wait for Bert to hop around and then miss entirely and lose Mario. So the goal here is just to, to bonk Bert with our bounty of beautiful eggs. I wish that there was a a B word for eggs, but there is, and that would have been wonderful alliteration, and I could have submitted this to, like, you know, the government for extra funding for how great I was at using the English language. That's how that works. So here we go. He's gonna be starting to lose his clothes. His pants start to fall down. This is like a pants off dance off here. And that's probably why he's so bashful, is because now he's naked. And he will explode in shame. Maybe we should make that more of a thing, you know? You do something weird, maybe you just explode in shame, and you see people just doing that, you're like, oh, they must have been so ashamed. They exploded. That's normal, right? A little better this time around. 80 points? Okay. 
Not bad, not bad. So that's actually going to conclude today's episode. This has been Yoshi's Island. I've been D-Mike. And I'll see you guys next time on Super Nintendo Sundays. Bye!